In this task, we're going to introduce the concept of a sprite. Now, this is something that's often used in gaming to represent an object on a screen. You'll see from the original menu here that there is no game option, but if you go to advanced and click on game, you'll see that creating sprites, sprites appear. So I'm going to create a sprite. So on start, the first thing I want to do is to set a variable. There we are. And the variable we're going to rename the variable to capture. There it is, and that catcher is going to be set to a sprite. Now I'm going to put the sprite at some coordinates, so on here at the moment it's at 2, 2. Well, I want it right at the top here in the middle. So I'm going to set that to 2, 4. And we should be able to see that the catcher here is at the bottom. And they're going to be catching a sprite, which is the ball that comes down from the top. OK, so I need to do exactly the same thing again. I'm going to be setting here a new variable called ball. So this is a second type of sprite on the screen. And again, I go to my gaming option. Create this time a sprite. Sprout, and this one is going to be at 2, 0. I've got two of them on the screen, one at the top and one at the bottom. Of course, the unfortunate thing is we don't know which sprite is which. So I'm going to go to the gaming here. And on... Ball. I'm going to change that to ball. I'm going to set not the X but the blink, that's the blink of the cell, to four. So when we run this now, you see that we've got the ball here flashing, and that's going to come down, and the catch is at the bottom to try and catch the ball. Now, when the ball hits the catcher. And that's something the game can find for us. Um, we're going to add one to the score eventually. But at the moment, if it's not touching, I want the ball to drop down. So I'm going to set a while loop to do this. Lots of games take the idea of a while loop. You set variables at the beginning, then inside the while loop, the state of the game loops round. So let's have a look. While the ball is not being caught, so and so here we are. There it is. I'm going to use a bit of logic here. Say while not ball touching I'm going to get the catcher from the variables and replace the tree. So while the ball is not touching the catcher, I'm going to move the ball down one. And to move it down one, I'm going to change the y by one. So into my game, I'll do on ball change y by one and that will drop it down unfortunately this happens unbelievably quickly so we want to stall it for a little while so i'm just going to pop a pause in there of a thousand so that we can 
see the whole thing running. So that's right over here now. There we are. If we run it, there's the blinking. And as you can see, it drops down till it touches it. Okay. And when it touches it, you can now set a variable, for example, number of catches. And as soon as they touch, you can set that to one. So that's the basic principle of starting off your game. First of all, setting sprites so that you can see them. And then inside a gaming loop with a condition where you exit the game, achieving some sort of movement of the objects in the game.